Coming up on Lead TV, Abby Litz and Cooper Kelly gives us helpful tips on upcoming AP exams. And Marley Bassett gives us the latest in national news. Good morning, Somerville. I'm Isaac Cinnamon. And I'm AC Canty. Today is Friday, April 23rd, and Wade TV starts now. approaching, students have all got one main worry, exams, specifically AP exams. So far, all of the testing dates have been released in an exam schedule. The schedule provides three testing dates for each subject between early May and mid-June. If you want to know more about when your exam is, go to the AP College Board website to find out more. Now that they know when their exams are, let's talk about the more important matter, studying. Many students find studying boring and end up not doing it. A lot of the time, this doesn't turn out well, and they end up failing unless they get insanely lucky or just a genius. But here at Wave TV, we want to help students so they don't fail. That's why we're here today to give you some studying tips. Number one, put a snack at the edge of your paper and pace yourself so that after you read a certain amount of information, you can take a break and snack a little. Not only does this help you study faster, but you also get a tasty treat after doing your work. Number two, turn your topic into a game. Instead of reading the same packet of information five million times, Try using flashcards, puzzles, or even an online quizzes to make your experience more fun. And finally, number three, try making a song out of it. I'm sure you've all heard the super catchy songs and parodies using educational subjects on YouTube, so try making one yourself. If it's good enough to remember, then you won't forget the information you need to pass the exam. We hope these suggestions are useful and can even help a few people pass their exams. And remember, Somerville, that studying isn't going to get done itself. Reporting for WebTV, I'm Abby Litz. And I'm Cooper Kelly. So much breaking news has gone on this past week that it can often feel overwhelming. So this week we've rounded up the top headlines for you. America has faced one of the most violent weekends in recent memory. Following the shooting at a FedEx facility in Indianapolis that killed eight, three more shootings occurred this past weekend. Three people were shot in an Austin, Texas mall before the suspect was apprehended. Three people were also shot in a Kenosha, Wisconsin tavern. Lastly, one person was killed and five people wounded during a drive-by shooting in Columbus, Ohio. There were reports of an active shooter reported in the Arboretum area of northwest Austin. Last Saturday, Prince Philip's funeral was held at St. George's Chapel. Philip was the husband of Queen Elizabeth II for more than 70 years. The funeral was full of military traditions and reflected his lifetime of service and the many charities he supported. Only 30 family members and friends were allowed to attend because of Britain's COVID restrictions. The Queen sat alone, her face covered, as she bid farewell to her husband of more than seven decades. The CDC announced that the Johnson & Johnson vaccine could be back in rotation by Friday. The one-dose vaccine was temporarily paused due to rare cases of blood clots. The nonetheless, as you said, out of, out of an abundance of caution, they want to take a quick pause, take a look at it, yeah. see what's going on, see if there are any more details, and then that's it. Good news was also announced last week when the U.S. reached an important milestone of having 50% of adults who have received at least one vaccine. Mexico's president is proposing a new migration deal between North and Central America. This deal would allow migrants to work in Mexico planting crops and trees for three years in exchange for a six-month work visa in the U.S. with an eventual pathway for U.S. citizenship. We know that was a lot of heavy stuff to go through, so here's a piece of good news. Don Muchow recently completed his goal to run from Disneyland to Walt Disney World. He ran between these landmarks to raise awareness for type 1 diabetes, which he has been living with since 1972. Park staff were on hand to greet him when he arrived and loaded him up with lots of Disney souvenirs. Love you guys. Be sure to stick with us for all of the latest headlines. For Wave TV, I'm Marley Bassett. Thank you, Abby, for those useful study tips. I know I need them. And thanks, Marley, for keeping us up to date. Next up, Dylan Rosario tells us a little more about Earth Day. And Mike Hicks tells us about a new dessert place in Somerville. Hello, Somerville. I'm here at the front door of Crumble Cookies, getting the insight on the new store in Azalea Square. Let's go.
and these are amazing. Hey, I'm Earth. Earth Day is about keeping me clean. But if you humans keep littering, I won't be a cool planet anymore. I give you water, land, and oxygen, and best of all, Will Smith. Why are you suspecting me, man? You take my air, and with all the gas, you blow into it. That's terrible. Not to mention my poor animals. See, those are my babies right there. See what you're doing to them? A few years ago, I tried to reach out to these young people to get them to help me. And it didn't go so well. On a serious note, there are plenty of things you could do to help me. Conserve the amount of resources you use. Instead of riding in many cars, use a simple carpool. Start recycling. Use energy saving light bulbs. Start a compost. All these little things can help make me a little cleaner. It's great there are still positive things we can do to keep our earth healthy. And I don't know about you, but I am definitely craving cookies. That's all for now, Somerville. For Wave TV, I'm Isaac Cinnamon. And I'm AC Canty. Have a great weekend, Somerville. I'm finished watching from the sidelines. You people have done whatever you please for far too long. I'm taking back control. And when I'm done, there will be nothing left.